Crude oil is our only form of transportation fuel. Without crude oil, we can't ship things across the ocean, we can't drive our cars, and we can't fly planes. It's the only form of energy that you actually put in a gas tank and actually go someplace. So if we didn't have crude oil, we would all basically be walking. I'm Jim Nelson, retired vice chairman of CalDive International. Currently, I am on the board of SOS California, a nonprofit organization. I am here to tell you a story that needs to be told. We started this film project in 2009 and have assembled a number of local professionals who will share their thoughts and stories. You are going to agree with some and disagree with others, but either way, there's a crude reality that we all must deal with. What we are going to see is the history of what SEEPs are all about and what we, the general public, don't know about SEEPs. We are going to hear about the economics of producing oil and the disaster of economics if you do not produce oil. We are going to talk about the risks involved in drilling and compare those risks to the benefits we stand to gain by developing domestic reserves, particularly offshore California. SOS California is dedicated to educating the public. Our goal is to empower the public with scientific facts and research to fuel inquiry and a search for answers. Methane is a really powerful greenhouse gas. It's 26 times more powerful than CO2. It just boils right out of, the, out of the ocean everywhere. Right now, there are, one could say, an invisible smokestack of methane that's rising up into the sky above us. It's the largest source of hydrocarbon reactor organic gases in Santa Barbara County. It's the same toxic chemical as what was spilled in 69. It's toxic. It is the biggest single pollutant in our atmosphere. The National Academy of Sciences says Mother Nature spills more oil into the environment than Exxon, Shell, BP, and Chevron combined. 63% of all seepage, oil seepage in oceanic waters, comes from seeps. Less than 1% comes from oil spills. So in the last 40 years, there's only been 850 barrels of oil that have been spilled into California coastal waters, compared over the same period with 2 million barrels that have seeped uh, into our marine environment, causing uh, pollution on a wide scale. The public is largely unaware of the impact of pollution caused by natural oil seeps. I've actually asked some of the so-called environmentalists what their plan is as far as the seepage. You know, what are you guys going to do? And they don't have a plan. So if we have millions of barrels that are actually seeping into the environment every year, then we're talking about a significant amount of revenue potential that is being lost. You've got billions of dollars, billions of barrels of oil and gas, and billions of dollars of potential revenue sitting offshore. Can't afford to sit and do nothing. Our goal is to tell the story that has never been told before. miles north of the Los Angeles Basin is the idyllic city of Santa Barbara, a sleepy rural community until the Summerland oil fields were discovered a little over a century ago. These offshore oil reservoirs naturally release oil and gas into the coastal waters through cracks in the ocean floor. These offshore oil and gas um, uh, seeps have been going on for hundreds of thousands of years. For thousands of years, this natural phenomenon has provided resources and means for the nation and the local inhabitants of what is now Santa Barbara. The United States was the world's single largest oil producer for almost a, almost a century. Ironically, uh, one of the first large producing areas of oil was here in, on, the, on the coast of California. And so California was a dominant, dominant producer of oil for years and contributed heavily to the U.S. Uh, 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 robust economy. For 75 years, California oil production significantly contributed to the domestic industrial needs of the United States, something it would be doing today if not for unintended consequences. Here we are at Santa Barbara's 
once beautiful harbor. Well, it was not good. It was not pretty. Um, it wasn't something that you could just uh, overlook. If you look at the, the birth of the environmental movement uh, that took place here in Santa Barbara, it all started with the blowout of Platform 8. That gave basically genesis to the whole movement uh, that, that got very, very active in, in opposing oil. The spill mobilized a before unheard mass. It sits stranded like a giant wounded animal all through the morning, bleeding its cargo of Norsefolk crude at a rate of When the Valdez crashed and spilled all that oil in Alaska, that just brought it all back. These ill-fated mistakes are forever entrenched in people's memories, equating industrialized oil production with catastrophic spills. Understandable, but erroneous. Don't think of oil spills as just things caused by oil companies and people in an industrial operation. Oil spills are caused by Mother Nature, an act of God. In the Santa Barbara Channel, there are 1,600 active seeps, which are fissures or cracks in the ocean floor. The pressure pushes the oil through it to the extent such that every year the amount of oil emitted into the ocean is the equivalent of the 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill. Every four years it's the equivalent of the Valdez oil spill. Because of tremendous technological advances, a mere 850 barrels of oil from offshore operations have found its way into California waters since the 69 spill an insignificant amount compared to the two million barrels of oil that have seeped naturally over the past 40 years. While oil seepage is a natural occurrence, it is nevertheless deadly. Oil and gas seeps are very uh, detrimental to the uh, coastal uh, environment by virtue of killing wildlife and washing oil and tar up on California beaches. The claim by some environmental groups that the local marine life has adapted to the crude oil and natural gas seeps is unfounded. The 69 oil spill left approximately 3,900 birds oiled. Compare that to the 19,000 birds that have been oiled by the toxic natural oil seepage since 1969. I've actually asked some of the so-called environmentalists what their plan is as far as the seepage. You know, what are you guys going to do? You've got oil bubbling out, oil and gas bubbling out of the ocean, fouling the environment, you know, choking the fish and the seals and the birds, and they don't have a plan. They have no plan at all in terms of, of what they're going to do to address the natural seepage. They have no plan at all to clean this stuff up. June Taylor of Wildlife Care Network has dedicated her life to caring for the unfortunate birds that have been caught in Mother Nature's deadly path. If we were able to reduce the natural oil seepage in the area, do you think that would be a positive for the wildlife and the birds in particular? That would be a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> Save a lot of birds. Yeah. Amongst the most playful and intelligent of all marine life, in Hydra Lutris. Of all the marine mammals, the sea otter is probably the most sensitive to oil. David Jessup, the senior wildlife veterinarian for the California Department of Fish and Game's office, was not surprised when he determined the cause of Olive's misfortune. Well, Olive came into us in February uh, 2009. She's basically circling the drain. Olive, the oiled otter, was suffering and close to death when she was discovered stranded on a Monterey, California beach covered with tar, tar that was a result of natural oil seepage. After we were able to wash and care for Olive, we started, uh, our labs started to try to figure out what the source of the oil was. It turned out to be Monterey Formation crude oil from areas down around San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County. Um, we had uh, a series of uh, storms and weather uh, coming from the south during the preceding two or three weeks, and that's how we think the oil and tar paddies got up here into Monterey Bay. Few marine mammals will be as fortunate as Olive. In the meantime, the offshore reservoirs will continue seeping unless they are managed. Now we could do one of two things. We could basically, let's get rid of the seeps, and so why don't we drain the Santa Barbara Channel and put cement down? 
Now that's a very unpractical solution. Or we could say, why don't we actually extract the oil out of the reservoirs and remove the pressure and then the seeps will go away and create that, create that into a locally domestic form of energy and actually balance the California budget. So it's that simple. We can either waste it and have it go into the atmosphere and create this methane, which is terrible, or we can actually turn it into usable energy. The U.S. Minerals Management Service estimates there are 14 to 19 billion barrels of untapped California oil reserves currently unavailable because of restrictions on offshore oil exploration. This pronouncement is based on antiquated 1980s technology. Presently, about 40% of California's oil consumption is imported from foreign countries. Tapping California's offshore reserves would essentially eliminate the need for shipping foreign oil through California waters and fundamentally take California out of its fiscal crisis. So I think that people, when they see their social services being cut, education being cut, they're going to finally say, why are we doing this when we've got this tremendous revenue source sitting offshore? SOS California has embarked on the task of educating people to the wide-ranging advantages of oil production off the Santa Barbara coast. Well, we're going out to see the second largest natural seeds of hydrocarbons in the world. For over a quarter century, oil exploration has been severely constrained because of congressional and state policymakers. The mission of presenting the truth and educating the public rests in the hands of this grassroots organization. SOS is creating a statewide platform that all citizens' voices can be heard. This is not politics that we have here. We have an oil seepage, you know, that, that we need to have taken care of. And this is a volatile topic. The people, for the most part, have been brainwashed. The misinformation is an overstatement of the risks and the dangers and a, uh, a downplay of the benefits. Taking it upon himself to expose the misinformation, underwater pioneer and SOS California co-founder Lad Handelman is intent on stopping the pollution of Santa Barbara beaches. A former abalone diver, Lad Handelman formed two international subsea companies. 25 years ago, an accident left him confined to a wheelchair, but Lad never let that stop him. Today, Laddie's objective is to tackle the problem of toxic seeps and bring the concept of safe oil production to light. Seeing all these big needs we had and problems, uh, I knew what I believe was a good answer for it. Lad Handelman called me one day and he said, you're really worried about this, aren't you, Sarah? I really am. He said, well, I'm going to do something about it. And he created this movement. It disturbed me to see us sending our national resource of our money supply over to foreign countries who don't even like us when we have our own resources right here. A boundless supply of resources that is currently being released freely into our environment. To bring this argument into a scientific light, Laddie brought physicist, environmentalist, and author Bruce Allen on board. There's been uh, research uh, sponsored uh, by the University of California over more than a 20-year period documenting that offshore oil and gas production has led to significant reductions in offshore oil and gas seepage. So it seems pretty clear that there's a direct relationship between offshore oil production and seepage reductions. Absolutely. And this is one of the very few places in the world you can actually document this. It might be likely that you would reduce the uh, seepage over time. There's no question they would reduce the amount of seepage. And in fact, the present seepage offshore is great where you have unproduced state leases. For decades, there's been a moratorium on offshore oil and gas production and exploration off the California coast. Lifting this ban would mean a staggering $42 billion for the state in royalties over the next 30 years. Bruce, right now we're heavily 
are dependent on foreign oil. If we, in fact, increase the production of oil offshore of California, is it going to make a difference? Then actually it would. Off the coast of California, known offshore resources that we know exist, mm -hmm. if we started producing those, we could reduce by more than 50% California's uh, imports of foreign oil. And if we increased oil production additionally by looking for some new resources offshore, we could completely eliminate California's imports of foreign oil, making California energy independent. Lifting this ban would bring scores of new technical high-paying jobs to Santa Barbara County and 300 to 400 million dollars annually for years to come. The situation is this, if you want to keep things as they are, with crime rates going up, with classroom sizes being uh, too high, uh, for government services, essential government services being diminished, then just keep doing the status quo. We have no choice but to use oil for some time in the future. We do have a choice to extract it environmentally wise, and that would be here, or environmentally stupid, which is what we're doing now in, uh, by importing it from places like Venezuela and, and where we are. Now a new report claims the administration, which opposes offshore exploration for oil in the United States, might be financing it in Brazil. And the report says the price tag is in the billions. Two billion dollars to be exact. Why are we willing to fund high price oil exploration in other countries when we have all the resources we need right here in our own backyard? I think offshore drilling would help this state so much it's unbelievable. There's tax dollars, there's fuel benefits, there's jobs, there's cleaning up the ocean. I mean, what more can you want? And the problem is, the problem is that people are living in the past. Everything is viewed through the lens of the 69 oil spill and the Valdez. Today's highly technical and sophisticated oil platforms and production systems are vastly superior to what they were in 1969. However, once the single greatest threat to our marine environment is recognized, fear of an accident is valid. One of the greatest risks we have for oil spills is not from the platforms, it's from the oil tankers. The potential for a catastrophic spill in California waters increases significantly as we continue to use foreign tankers to import oil. These tankers carry upwards of four million barrels of oil at a time. We can strongly regulate high levels of safety on our platforms, but we have no control over foreign tankers. I truly believe that we can have increased drilling here and still manage the resources the way that we need to. Santa Barbara is still uh, the environmental king that it needs to be, but with increased drilling in a responsible manner. Since the 1969 spill, has there ever been another blowout in, off the coast of California? No. A lot of through the advanced technology, and not only that, the uh, responsibility of the people doing the work. to take it very seriously. Dispelling misinformation, clarifying ambiguity, and targeting misdirected blame are a few reasons why SOS California was created. Through town hall meetings, seat tours, and Laddie's own passion, SOS California's goal is to solve this major crisis and take us into the future now. So we're not talking about 10, 20 years startup. We're talking about two, three years from now that we could be producing at pretty good capacity. Going forward, there's actually a lot more oil that can be produced, and natural gas for that matter. And at current prices, uh, that would produce just a revenue windfall for uh, the state of California and for the county of Santa Barbara. What was once a dream is now a reality for SOS California founder, Lad Hantelman. In 2009, Bruce Allen took this monumental cause to the U.S. Congress. SOS California is diligently working to put this key issue on the ballot for the people of California to decide, and therefore build a bridge to a stable and renewable future.
What for me is important is the potential that we could actually benefit many future generations for thousands of years into the future where children playing on the beach will have no evidence of oil and tar on their beaches and will not realize that once upon a time our beaches were very heavily polluted by oil and tar and that they're far cleaner. So it's really both the peer-reviewed research, local uh, stories and eyewitness accounts that uh, document the fact that these uh, seepage reductions have been occurring since offshore oil and gas production began off the coast of uh, Santa Barbara. And of all the places in the world, I think the, the uh, offshore California, because of what we know about the, about the productivity of the platforms in the Santa Barbara Channel, of the incredible tar balls that are still littered all up and down there, has probably more potential than any other place in the world if we basically take a leap of faith and say, let's actually start drilling for it again. And if we do, we basically will actually clean up the water and clean up the environment and create resource productivity for a state that's bust today. So the stakes could not be any higher. California is a leader in production safety, and we think it can expand its offshore production to provide needed environmental and economic benefits and energy resources safely and responsibly. Mm -hmm.